you and I actually have a secret weapon. And it's this little mitzvah we do. And what's in, uh, and it's wait when it's exactly how we wake up in the morning. Okay. So there was a very, there's a, the field of positive psychology is like huge and, and tons of money pumped into it. It's, you know, helping people left and right of books and everything, you know, how to navigate this. But there is um, one of these positive psychologists. He actually arrived at Harvard University. His name was Sean Acker and he and arrived at Harvard University to do like his master's studies program in psychology. And he noticed that everyone was down, like everyone was different. And he was like, what is going on? Why are all these freshmen? They've made it, right? It's their, it's school. You know, you don't arrive at Harvard if it's not top on your list, right? It's not like, well, maybe I'll go to Harvard. Maybe I won't. It, it's a goal. They've arrived at their goal. And why are they so miserable? Like what is going on here? And so he actually got permission from Harvard University to live in the freshman dorms. For years, he did research. And he actually delivered the lecture that was given, um, the largest lecture in Harvard University's history. And in, in that lecture, he talks about something so powerful. He talks about the idea that right when you wake up in the morning, you need to focus on gratitude. You need to focus on what are the gifts you have in your life. You need to not just focus on it, but you need to verbalize it, okay? That coupled with another major thought in, you know, thinker in the positive psychology world, his name is Brian Tracy. He describes that first thing in the morning, whatever crosses your mind first thing in the morning actually becomes the rudder of your ship. So what's the rudder, right? You and I know the captain sitting there with a big shiny steering wheel, right? But really what's ship moving the ship and those of you who live near water know there's that little part in the back a little bit murky, not so glamorous, like the, you know, the big wheel, right? Underwater, maybe it's covered in who knows what, moss or stuff, but actually the rudder is what steers the ship and chooses the direction of the ship. And so this guy, Brian Tracy says, don't turn on the news first thing in the morning. You know, don't check your phone right away. Like stop and think and make sure that the thoughts across your mind right away in the morning are positive ones. And what are those positive thoughts that can really help us? So gratitude, right? We, you know, I remember um, a lot of people are pretty, they look at a lot of American college students and they're like, oh, you know, I'm ungrateful. They just want the latest, you know, iPhone, this, that. And I remember when our community together were um, major backup supports for Hurricane Harvey in Houston. We were the closest city that had supplies. So five truckloads in and our students were going in, cleaning out houses. And I remember students saying, I never appreciated my possessions as much as watching, you know, rows and rows of miles of people with all their possessions on the street. There's something fascinating about gratitude and how to be take, often we take things for granted that we have. And we all have gifts. Even if it's difficult, we have gifts in life, right? It's not maybe the easiest time of our lives or phase of our, where we're holding, um, we may feel overwhelmed, or, but we all have gifts in life. And so the art of gratitude is tremendous. And when is the best time? According to these positive psychologists, right? First thing in the morning, that's gonna determine which direction your day is gonna go. Okay, what's amazing is for us as Jews, that wisdom has been there for many, many years. We have a very simple 12 word prayer, Modet Ani, this simple mitzvah that we do right when we wake up and we'll unpack it together and we'll discuss how this is something that we have, as we described last week, our rich heritage of mitzvot are not just things to do, there are opportunities of connection, of a bond that are so incredible for our lives. And you know what's unbelievable? I'm not, again, a neuroscientist, but I know a little bit about brainwaves, right? The study of brainwaves is what your brain, how your brain operates. And our brain operates on different waves, right? If I'm running, it's on one wave. If, it's, if I'm sleepy, it's another alpha waves, beta waves, gamma waves, delta waves. And if you, you know, attach something to my head and you can see what I'm doing and how my brain is operating. Well, right when you wake up in the morning, 
your brain is in alpha mode, which means you're awake, but not fully conscious, right? Maybe, maybe the first, first thoughts, ask yourself for a second, what was the first thought that crossed your mind this morning? Oh gosh, am I late? It's Monday again, day number, I don't know what of quarantine. I don't know, I don't know what your thoughts were, right? But what we're learning and what we've known for years as Jews, we have thousands of years of wisdom that tell us first thing in the morning, your brain is what crosses your mind according to this alpha waves, goes deeper into your consciousness. I'm not an experienced meditator, but those who are trying to actually get their brain in alpha mode because what it's the most sponge-like and absorbent. So what thoughts do I want to cross my mind at that time? Right? What do I want my brain to be processing? When it, yes, it's murky and I'm asleep and I'm not quite aware. What crosses my mind? And here... What's incredible, we have this gift, a simple 12 word gift that actually is transformative. So we'll unpack the Modani together. We'll talk a little bit more of how it applies in our lives and the how to of doing it, because this is meant to be practical mitzvahs, how to do it. So you wake up in the morning and what's the first words? Modeh ani lefanecha, melech chai v'kayam, shechazarta bi nishmati bechemla, Rabba and Munatecha. Mode comes from the word Toda. Thank you. In order for you to appreciate something that someone does for you, there has to be a dose of humility. All right? When I say thank you to someone, I'm acknowledging they've given me something that I didn't have, or they've thought of me in a way that no, someone else didn't. So right away comes, start your day with this dose of surrender, admit, humility. Thanks. Gratitude, gratefulness, toda. And here comes within these 12 words, fundamental ideas. Ani lefanecha, I before you, for you Hashem, for you God. Now, the ani, the I is, you know, I think as mom and women and from all different ages and all different stages across the country, we all define ourselves very different at different times, right? So many, who am I? Am I a mom? Am I a sister? Am I a friend? Am I a, a rabbit? Who am I? Right, ask yourself, how, what title do I give myself? I'm a senior citizen, I'm a minor. I, you know, what is it the labels we give ourselves? And here, this 12 word prayer is saying, put all the labels aside, set it all aside. There's the quintessential ani lefanecha, me before you. God, the I, the me, the purest me, I have a relationship with you. And it's not a relationship that's the rabbi's relationship. It's mine right there in my bed, in my murky state, with my morning breath, with my hair looking like who knows what. The I, the essential me, I before you. Me and you, God. Okay? No descriptions. Not me. We're not, not ju just me. Me and you, God, we're establishing this relationship. Gratitude, establishing the relationship. The fanecha before you, the essential me. Okay? Define boundaries, ages, stages, even rationale. Because first thing in the morning, we may not be the most rational, right? Okay? And then comes the next line. Melech chai v'kayam, a living and eternal king. Now, what's interesting is there are many perspectives that, you know, God created this world, set it spinning, stepped down, and was like, hey, good luck, guys. I'm going to eat popcorn front row and see what kind of messy people make. Like, I don't know, you know, but here, what we're saying, no, 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 there is a living and eternal King that I have a relationship with the King of all beings of everything. I have that personal relationship and it's not a God that, you know, is removed. It's alive, a life source, real involved. Yes. In my day-to-day -day grind in my worries, in my struggles, there's that me and God, we have this relationship and this bond. The Kayam, it describes Melchai Kayam, a living and eternal king, was, is, will be unchanging, involved in the world now and in my life, past, present, future. So this is a big idea. Me in my own little bed, wherever I find myself, has this deep relationship with this God who created everything was, is, and will be, defies time and space. 
that's powerful. I'm acknowledging that. But what am I acknowledging about that relationship? God, Shechazarta, that he returned, be nishmati, to within me, my soul. So what's interesting is it describes that when sleep is a 60th of death, that when we go to sleep, we all know if someone, God forbid, goes to sleep and doesn't wake up, they're not here with us, right? Waking up is essential as we established already, right? So we, when we wake up in this, we're, we're recognizing that at, at night, while we're asleep, our, a portion of our soul ascends and just gets polished and plugged in and given back for a new day. New potential. It's like, you know, right before you go to bed, you wanna make sure your phone is charged. So when you wake up, you got a full battery, you're ready to recharge and go. Same thing, our souls, a portion of the sends on high. And in the morning, when we wake up, God returns and restores that within me. What's nishmati? My soul, my breath, my neshama, recharged, renewed. And not someone else's. So, mine. My part of Hashem, the part of me that is part of God, that relationship, that bond that each and every one of us has a part of God within us, a holiness, a purity, an unchanging part, no matter what yesterday was, right? I have that new day and that new potential, that breath of life, that godly divine part of myself that's like just, just goes beyond any definition. And that's restored and renewed within me. And here comes the most beautiful, and specifically me, by the way, each and every one of us with our own issues, our own insecurities, our own traumas, our own weaknesses, our own flaws, we all, whatever, whatever our dynamics are, okay? Th that's the soul God gives back to us, the, the me, right? And then comes something beautiful, Bechamel with compassion, because you know what? First of all, compassion, that I have this new opportunity, this new day, this new moment, but me yesterday, I don't know, maybe yesterday I wasn't my best self, or maybe yesterday I stayed on the couch and watched Netflix all day and it was kind of a bust. Like, what did I do today? I don't know. I don't know. What day is it? I don't even know, right? We can have those days, or maybe it's a day where we don't show up in our lives in the best way that we're the most proud of. We may, maybe none of you have had that day, but I've had one or two days like that in, in, in life, right? And for sure in the past few months, right? But here Hashem saying, no, no, no. I'm giving it to you, a new day with compassion. Uh, graciously, I'm giving it back. You have a new day, a new opportunity. And then comes something incredible. Rabba and Munatacha, great is your faithfulness. Now what's amazing about this faithfulness, there's different ways to look at this faithfulness. So what's this faithfulness talking about? So one explanation is when I realized that God chose this day for me and restored this soul within me and gave me this opportunity, it's going to affect my relationship with God. And it's going to increase my faith in, in him and his involvement in my life. When I meditate about these ideas, when I think about these con like concepts, but great is your faithfulness is also Hashem having faith in you, in each and every one of us, wherever we find ourselves at whatever stage we find ourselves with, whatever, again, Good days, the bad days, God says, I have faith in you. I need you because you're here in this world and you're a partner in there's something the world needs from you. And I want to share with you something. So I had this, I, I kind of got a little bit obsessed with Modani. So now I want to tell you, I've been saying this Modani prayer since before I was, was born, right? My, my triplets were born at 32 weeks and they left the NICU at 36 weeks. And before they left the NICU, the neonatal intensive care unit, they did this study on them and they did a psychological analysis, Baylor's you know, school of psychology. And like, these kids are 36 weeks, they wouldn't even be arriving for another four weeks, right? And they did this study. And one of the things she said, I can tell these children were held to and spoken to daily. What were we telling them? Philosophy 101, <laughs> what were we telling them? How to cook, I, what was I telling them already? We were holding them. We were saying Moda'ani with them. We were saying Shema with them before they went to bed. We were singing Torah songs with them. Right when we're born, this is a Moda'ani, this prayer becomes a part of us. 